I want to take a moment to introduce my guest for the first hour of this morning's trial coverage. I'm joined by Wendine Eolise. She is the chairman and CEO of Eolise International. It's a firm that specializes in attorney retainer searches, but more important for today's purposes, she is also a world record holder in women's poker, and she has competed in the World Series of Poker at Binion's Horseshoe Casino. Binion's Horseshoe issued a commemorative chip in her honor to highlight women's participation in the game. She's also worked with New York Governor George Pataki on the legalization of casino gambling in the state. Welcome to Court TV. It is such a pleasure to have you. Well, thank you for inviting me to join you, Nancy. And, of course, so many of us, you know, we're focusing on this trial, as we were just discussing before we came out of the background. We're, we're focusing on the trial and the legal issues behind this murder allegation, but the world of gambling, it, it's incredible, and it's not just a Las Vegas issue. People come from all over the world to go to Vegas to gamble in some of the greatest casinos in the world. Now, tell me, how did you first become familiar with gaming and the gambling world in Vegas? Well, my very first trip to Las Vegas was to the Stardust Hotel back in 1964. And it was a wonderful experience. Um, I was like a little kid um, <laughs> who was just gazing about me, loved the whole experience, the entertainment, and it was strictly a vacation visit. But uh, several years later, I went back to Las Vegas when I had a client uh, who was looking for a general counsel. And at that time, I had begun my business as a recruitment firm mm -hmm. for lawyers, um, which was a really new business. and. Uh, I had one client followed by a second client. I had an opportunity to work with probably 10 or 12 different casinos in hiring lawyers for their internal operations mm -hmm. as in-house counsel, and then extended my own operations into what's my major business today, which is legal consulting, and I have a niche in helping companies and governments uh, hire legal counsel, mm -hmm. retain it, and I had a lot of business in that area for many years in Las Vegas, beginning with uh, Caesars World and including the MGM, um, having worked occasionally with Riviera, where I was in Las Vegas very frequently in order right. to work on those matters. Well, you know, speaking of the MGM, it reminded me that when we think of casinos, we think strictly of gambling. But the casinos now, I mean, they are multi-million dollar operations, and it's not just about gambling. For instance, uh, they have prize fights there, they have uh, entertainment, world-class entertainment there. I mean, it has morphed into a, a, a giant mega corporation these casinos have. I was thinking strictly back about the uh, Tyson fight at the MGM Grand and uh, how they've taken on a, a whole new identity. But Wendy, how did you end up being the world record holder in women's poker? Well, first of all, uh, when I started playing poker back in 1986 at the uh -huh. World Series of Poker, there were a very few number of women yeah. who were ready to compete at that level. So it was easier to become a record holder at that point among women in particular because there weren't that many against whom I had to compete. My first experience in playing poker at Binion's Horseshoe in 1986 resulted in my finishing in the money, as they say in poker, which means that um, among the last 36 players that year who were paid money uh, for their finish, I was able to finish number 25 along with that grand old man of poker, Johnny Moss. Mm -hmm. And it was an exhilarating experience. I loved it. And uh, it made me think I ought to go out and really try to learn how to play poker because I knew I'd gotten very lucky, as they say. Well, okay, so you, uh, but how did you get into it? I mean, I've, I've been to Las Vegas once, and I did just a routine uh, playing of the one-armed bandits, the slot machines, to say that I had gambled, walked around the casino floor, but nothing pulled me toward the poker table. But you went on to be a world-class player. What is it about the game that drew you? Well, I think, first of all, I had card sense before I started playing poker. Mm -hmm. I had, way back in the late 60s, um, been interested in an MIT professor's writings on blackjack mm -hmm. and um, was familiar with blackjack and the strategies in blackjack that could help reverse uh, the odds on whether or not you could win or lose a hand by keeping track of the cards. 
and um, I wasn't anxious to oh, be a blackjack yeah, hold counter. on, hold on. <laughs> I'd rather go in court and try a serial murderer <laughs> and put him behind bars than try to remember of keeping track of what cards somebody has shuffled 30 minutes ago. I mean, my people's minds just work in different but so you're telling me you can beat the the blackjack odds by by memorizing the cards that have been played before? well i sure can't anymore wow. i haven't done it for okay. 15 number years number one i'm totally <laughs> impressed okay but you know it's my understanding that the worst odds on the floor are the roulette odds is that true especially if you got the double o well i know the double o creates a problem for you but um, I, I think that just generally speaking, it's fair to say that casinos are in business to make money, and generally uh, they do because they beat the gambler. Well, I want to tell you a funny story, Wendy. I, I went to um, a conference on the legal issues, for instance, the First Amendment issues and so forth, of casino gambling recently, and uh, the big hot topic was internet gambling and video gambling, and these were all casino professionals. And when they started talking about internet gambling, they all burst into laughter because you basically never win. <laughs> and you, you fed your, your, your credit card into an internet site, and it just basically takes your money every draw. And is, unless you really know how to gamble, the same thing happens in real life on the floor. Well, that's, that's right. We take all kinds of gambles if we're entrepreneurs. But I want to get back to one difference between the uh, typical table games that exist in casinos and poker which is a very different type of gamble um, in poker you're not playing against the house mm -hmm. you're playing against other players and therefore the opportunity to develop skill in understanding the probabilities of winning a hand against other players in understanding the numbers questions as well as understanding the people questions and how people behave when they hold certain hands distinguishes poker very seriously from all of the other casino games. In fact, um, someone was asking me recently, uh, do I consider myself a gambler or a card player? And I said, well, I always understand that I'm a card player um, gambling in the same way as someone who's knowledgeable about stocks and someone who's knowledgeable about business gambles on their investments uh, in their business that they know. Um, and they said, well, how do you feel if someone calls you a gambler? And I kind of kid them and say, well, I remember when I started my legal placement business and people would walk around saying to me, aren't you a headhunter? And I'd say, no, I take the whole body. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is what people call it is of less concern to me on a personal level than how we handle our ability to develop skills in the things we do, whether it's a hobby, an avocation, or a vocation. And in poker, I became very serious in terms of tournament circuit play mm -hmm. and wanted to be the best that I could possibly be. Well, Wendy, uh, you have been there. You've been to Binion's Horseshoe Casino. You've been to every one of the gambling casinos in Las Vegas. I can't wait to talk to you about that and the, okay. the subculture of gambling and the subculture of the owners of these casinos. What type of world do they live in? That and a whole lot more when we come back. And speaking of gambling, did Ted Binion take the gamble of his life? when he bet on love in a strip bar with Sandy Murphy. She's on trial now for his murder. And let me remind you,